Now let's take a look at the bigger picture. Russell Stone's with us, CEO, owner of Scranton Financial. Russell, what do you what do you make of where we are here? You think there could be a Santa Claus rally? Well, I would say by most definitions, uh, we would probably say we're in the Santa Claus rally, but I don't think it's because the fundamentals of the economy are any good. I just think it's because there's a fear of missing out. Uh, there's uh, some momentum in the markets, uh, but it's, you know, the animal spirits left over from when the, uh, the optimism in the markets peaked out. It's peaked out in 2018, 2020, 2022, and here we are, 2024, and optimism is at its highest level. And we know from history and graphs that, that that's going to lead to a market correction. So uh, I, I would tell investors, get ready for a market correction, because that's what we're going to have. Do you think gold has more room to run? I know it hit 2100 recently. Today, you have it at 2047 a troy ounce. Gold and silver is something that you follow closely. Um, your thoughts? Would that be something that you would advise to folks? Well, anybody tracking gold and silver and markets were all, they're confused because we have rising markets and gold and silver peaking out, particularly gold hitting an all-time high. Uh, that doesn't really happen uh, in the markets normally that way. Usually gold is going down when markets are peaking. But in this scenario, I believe that the market rally is just about done and gold is ready to take off. And for a lot of different reasons, uh, there's a lot of pressure on the dollar as like the UAE is going to stop taking dollars to purchase oil. And they're going to start using the uh, local currency and other currencies to uh, purchase oil in. That's putting a lot of pressure on, on the consumer and on the markets in general. Uh, that's yet to come. We're going to see a lot more of that in 2024. So if you say gold is not acting exactly the way that you're used to it acting, and we have seen it at this new high, what would you recommend to folks as action, actionable advice, I should say, um, to investors? Here's what I say. Anybody who doesn't have a percentage of their portfolio invested in physical silver or gold, uh, I would start off by, by buying physical silver for 5 or 10% of your portfolio. Uh, that is important, not certificates, not, not uh, um, obligations on silver certificates or gold certificates, but physical gold or silver. And then from there, you just kind of take a, a, a step back, uh, dig some foxholes, get into them with your investments, use money market accounts that only use treasury bills, uh, pull back in the stock market a little, Prepare yourself to be a buyer at the bottom of the market. There is going to be a correction. We can't avoid it, uh, and that is going to happen. And when it does, you want to be a buyer, not a seller. Uh, makes sense. And to have gold to back up your your gold and silver to back up your portfolio is just smart money management. Uh, everybody should do it. You know, they often say if you have all your money in cash, then you miss the 10 best days of the year and you don't get the returns. Um, but you're saying cash is king. So do you feel, do you get torn? Because you might miss the best days. Well, I, I would look at it this way. If you're a day trader and you're good at it, then fine. You, know, you have to look at the micro picture. But if you're an everyday person going to work and you just contribute to your 401k plans, uh, in your investment accounts uh, randomly, then I would say you have to look at the macro approach and take it seriously. Uh, the worldwide debt, uh, the Fed and the Treasury struggle with monetary policy because the dollar has been fully depreciated. So I would say you have to take a defensive approach. If you're a good day trader and, you, and you're disciplined, by all means, you know, listen to the micro uh, aspects and viewpoints on the markets and trade that. But uh, if you're if you're an everyday person, you have to take this seriously. The dollar's under pressure. Interest rates are going to keep on going up despite the, the pullback right now. They're going to keep on going up. And inflation hasn't been beaten yet. Uh, until that happens, uh, we have to be defensive, not offensive. Right. Okay. And then you think bonds is probably a good place to park some money too, right? Yeah, I, w I would stress that make sure that you look at the quality of the bonds, make sure that you understand uh, what happens between a bond fund versus individual bonds, because the underlying guarantees in a bond fund uh, don't guarantee your principal or your dividend, as opposed to individual bonds where the dividend and the principal have protection, not necessarily guaranteed against default but guaranteed based on the way the bonds work. 
And then what am I leaving out? I mean, you talked about optimism being at this two-year high, and that's when you get nervous. Um, what am I leaving out for next year? Because tech has been a great performer for 2023. What do you think about 24? All right, well, this is where the memories of the investors has to be uh, uh, woken up a little. In 2000, tech led the, the ride up from the 80s, and tech also led the ride down in 2000 to 2003 uh, with a 78% drop. In 2020, tech led the, the way down, and it also led the rally back up. Uh, I, I, I believe personally that tech is going to lead the rally down. They're living on seven stocks right now, the, the magnificent seven, as I put in my notes. Uh, when one of those fails, that's going to send shockwaves in the tech sector. And I just want to, you know, buy low, sell high. I believe the markets are high. I believe tech is high. I believe it's overvalued. And it's not supported by, you know, when the money supply is shrinking, the M2 money supply is shrinking, how can they raise prices to fight off inflation in a shrinking money supply? It's very difficult. Very few companies will be able to manage that and pull it off. Yeah, and um, I mean, are you thinking a 10% pullback? You're saying correction. You're not saying bear markets. You're not thinking 20% pullback. You're thinking a 10% pullback for markets? No, no I, I believe we are in the bear market. We're just in the third leg of it. We're just starting the third phase of it. Wave one down was from November of 2021 till October 2022. This has been a bear market rally uh, since that point, but now we're ready for the next drop in the market. We have to do this. We want to lower the valuations of stocks, give them in line with what they're really valued at, and, and have the bond market reprice itself. And then we'll be ready for a long, sustained economic growth and prosperity. But we're not, we're not ready for that until we get rid of this debt problem and the overvaluations. All right. Russell Stone, Scranton Financial. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.